report every accusation against more officially debunked, media silent, this needs to go viral. The left must be crying in their beer today as they watch the mud they flung at Judge Roy Moore cleaned and polished off of him. The original accusation posted by the fake news site WAPO included allegations of improper contact with four women when they were teens. Somehow, WAPO failed to say that three of the women did not accuse Moore of any sexual improprieties and were perfectly legal. The lone one that did has seen her accusations completely debunked. Lee Korfman was the first accuser to contend any illegal contact occurred but her story has more holes than Alpine lace Swiss cheese. First, she said that she would talk to Moore on the phone in her bedroom so that her mother wouldn't hear, but that was a lie because her mother said she did not have a phone in her bedroom. She also claimed that she met Moore right around the corner from her house, but the address she gave is a mile away and would require her to cross in the middle of a busy highway. Korfman also claimed that her experience with Moore made her take drugs and become loose. That was proven to be a lie because the day she claimed she met Moore, she was in court because her mother wanted to give custody to her father on account of her bad behavior. Just 11 days later, she went to live with her dad in another town, making her timeline of events nearly impossible. And in the year following her claims against Moore, her behavior got much better, and it's documented in court papers. From Breit Bart The reason we are talking about that issue is that the Washington Post embellished its original story on Moore in which he was accused of molesting a 14-year-old four decades ago, with other accusers, both to entice the first alleged victim to come forward and to create the impression of a pattern of predatory behavior for which there is no evidence. The rest of the mainstream media followed suit, with CNN even making an issue of the fact that Moore met his wife when she was a teenager, though they married eight years later. A New Yorker story about Moore being kicked out of the mall for hitting on young women was later debunked, though it is evidently still widely believed on the left. These are the same leftists who didn't blink an eye when they found out that Macron met his wife when he was 15 and she was 39, and married. Could it be because of his leftist ideology? The question answers itself. The official story is that they didn't date until Macron was 18 and his future wife was 42. The next alleged victim was Beverly Young Nelson. Her story fell apart quicker than a thin cardboard dress in a driving rainstorm. She claimed that when she was 15, Moore tried to rape her at a restaurant she worked at. The problem was that the restaurant had a strict hiring policy and no one under 16 could get a job. Things went downhill from there. She produced a yearbook that she claims Moore signed for her, but she was 15, which would make her a freshman. That yearbook was issued six months before. How many people do you know who carry their yearbook around for six months? She also claimed that she never saw Moore again, but as luck would have it, that was also a lie. She filed for divorce from her husband in 1999 and the presiding judge was Judge Roy Moore. She dropped the divorce action and Moore signed the order dropping the suit. His aide added her initials DA to signify that the stamped signature was legitimate. The yearbook was signed with the same DA after his name that appeared on her court papers. Nelson claimed she was attacked in 1977, but the assistant did not go to work for Moore until 1987. Moore claimed that the signature is not his and his lawyer demanded that Nelson's lawyer, Gloria Allred hand it over to a neutral party for verification. She refused but said that she would hand it over the moment the Senate opened an investigation against Moore. That was a safe answer since the Senate cannot investigate a private citizen who is not suspected of committing a federal crime. The final accuser's story fell apart almost the moment she made the accusation. Tina Johnson reached out to Al.com and claimed that Roy Moore grabbed her butt as she was leaving his office. She was there signing over custody of her son to her mother. It was a very bitter lawsuit and Moore filed numerous affidavits accusing her of being a deadbeat mom violence and theft of numerous checks belonging to her relatives. If you hated a lawyer who made these accusations and he grabbed your behind, would you keep silent? She said nothing to anybody. Moore was in private practice at the time and had no power to punish her. Good thing Alabamans are not as easy to fool as liberal voters are.